What's up everybody? Welcome to Hammer Down Motorsports. Today we have more work to do on the Ram Rebel. As you can see, I already took out the center console and yes, it does look kind of intimidating at first, but I'm going to kind of go through what it took to get this removed and kind of why we did remove it and just kind of how things are coming together so far at this point in the build. All right, so we have our console here on our stand just to kind of make it a little bit easier to work on it. It was a lot easier to take this out of the truck than to try to do what I'm trying to do here leaving it inside and it actually was pretty easy to take out if you can see these holes right here there's actually a 10 millimeter bolt that goes in there's one on either side just goes straight forward there's a little corner piece on the dash which i'll show you guys in a minute you have to remove to get access to this guy then we have this little square hole here there's a little access cover that pops off there's a bolt there and there's another one right there you got to move the seats forward to see it but yeah just a little cover that pops off there take out that bolt that bolt that one same on the other side and this whole thing slides back you just undo the wire connectors there's two main connectors one there one there disconnect that and this whole thing will come right out of the truck so here we are in the back seat of the truck you can see the massive hole where the console used to be right here is kind of where i'm going to put our module for our led lighting and that way i can ground it right there there's already an existing ground and then our power is going to come from our switch pros which is going to mount into the console which is kind of why we have it out in the first place so we can mount that and then find our location for our lighting i do not have the front doors done just yet but i do have both rear door panels complete with all its new ambient lighting and yeah this is a bit of a process but this is kind of what you got to go through to get it done so these are the little corner pieces that have to come out on either side of the console they just have little clips that hold them in just pull it straight back and then you can gain access to the bolts that go forward that hold your console in place i did have to remove these trim pieces to be able to gain access to the bolts to remove the cd player and this whole kind of center unit but what you got to do there's one screw on the end here and the rest is just clips they pop straight up, get those out of your way. And then there's one connector for the CD player. You just wanna remember it is the black part that has the release, not the little gray part, which it kinda of looks like when it's installed. But yeah, just wanna push down this one big tab here on the black part, pull it out, and this whole thing can be removed just with a couple of screws. So now that we have this out of the console, we have nice access to the back of this panel. And on this side, you can see this is where our cell phone holders are and this is where we're going to mount our switch pros panel so in the instructions for the switch pro panel they do give you this little template I just cut it out kind of made the holes for where all the studs and everything are and where for our wiring harness needs to go through and then i'm just going to kind of line it up right here get it nice and centered where i want it mark it and then we can drill and install the panel and then in the switch pros instructions there's this little template i just cut it out and then you can kind of place it wherever you want to mount your panel so you know where all the little holes need to be for the bolt holes and your wiring connector and all that kind of good thing so what i'm going to do i'm going to put it right here being that this passenger cell phone holder really never gets used anyway and i think with this panel as slim as it is shouldn't really matter i mean if you did want to put a phone here you, you definitely still could but i think it's going to be a nice clean place to mount this and once we have all the stickers on it's really going to blend in nicely and it's really nice that the backlighting is rgb so we can change it to whatever we want i can match it to the same as what our usbs are and stuff like that so yeah should turn out really nicely so now that we're going through all the effort of pulling the console out and installing the switch pros panel and getting our module and everything in place where it's a nice clean location i had to add a little bit more light so in these map pockets right here i've got some extra light on either side and i think it's going to look really nice at night when we turn all this stuff on and just give you that little bit more of a custom touch so if you guys are wondering how i got the lighting in the map pocket i did have to drill a hole for a wire and you have to make it big enough for the connector because those connectors you can't remove the ends unless you want to take the heat shrink off and all that kind of stuff so i never did that i just drilled the hole big enough that i could fit the connector all the way through and i just did that by drilling through the front here you can see our connector is right there we got a y it goes over to the other side this is all going to tie up with our factory wiring go back to our module and to clean up the hole a little bit i don't think you're going to be able to see this sitting in the seat but if you did it's got a nice little grommet inside there make everything look nice and neat so we got our template in place everything's nicely here on the bench so we can see and it looks like everything is nicely centered and ready to go just going to have to mark all these holes with a paint pen and get out the drill it's time to commit so now that we have all our holes marked you can see on here there is actually a little bit of a scratch which our panel is now going to cover up that was there from the day i bought the truck that's one thing i've realized when buying a new vehicle 
the dealerships really don't take good care of them. They get beat up on the lot and you gotta be really careful. You gotta really look at your vehicle before you buy it. This one, I went over it pretty closely and I still missed a couple little minor things, but I mean, nothing is perfect and that's just the world we live in. And would you look at that? I mean, I couldn't have thought of a better place, I don't think, to put that in the truck. I think it's gonna be really easy to access. And let's see if our phone still fits, if we actually disabled this or not. Okay, slide it in there. No problem whatsoever. Phone still has some clearance. So if you did wanna put your phone in there still, you can, but obviously you're gonna cover your switches. I don't think I'm ever gonna have that issue, but very nice location for it. I did run into a little bit of an issue on the back. Right here, we do have another piece of plastic here, and then this is that rubber. I, guess, I think this whole thing's made out of rubber. There's kind of backing piece, but you can see we have our lock nuts and our studs for our panel. No problem there. I had to drill the back of this out a little bit because obviously our studs weren't long enough, so I had to just kind of run it through so it's the same as it is over here. But we did have a little issue with this guy right here. I was tightening it down with my little quarter inch ratchet right here and just going nice and slow and it ended up breaking it off broke off the stud right in the nut so yeah good times try to get this apart because i still have a little bit of thread sticking out the end i probably could have still got a nut on there so now i'm gonna have to try to find a little lock nut here or put a little bit more time into getting this broken stud out of this nut so we can fasten that all in there but they are very brittle, so definitely use caution when tightening these down. And I mean, like I said, I, I tightened it down very lightly and it still broke. So there's just that to consider. So with a little help from my van pliers, these actually have a little kind of, I don't know if you guys can see on the end, if you have a rounded off or small screw or something like that, they have these little kind of barbs in there and you can stick it right on the end of these and twist. And what I did is actually, just put that little stud that was broken off inside that nut in there and I was able to hold it and then I just took a wrench and ran the nut off and was able to save it so as you can see we got that little piece out of there and I will have the van pliers in the description if you guys are interested definitely something handy to have in your toolbox so here it is we got the console all back together trim pieces are back on we got the whole kind of center stack here put back together you can get a good idea of how that all looks now with our Switch Pros panel. Everything's nicely mounted here and should be a really easy place to access all of our buttons and should look really nice once it's all put back together. Then we have to mount our Bluetooth module just kind of on the floor, like I said before, run all our wiring with all the factory wiring and everything should work out really nicely. So that's about as far as we're gonna get on our custom console for today. I have to run the wire, which is sitting up there on the hood from the actual Switch Pros module through the firewall over to our Switch Pros panel. And then I have to mount the LED module and run a wire for the power for that all the way to the module under the hood as well so we can control it with our Switch Pros panel for our power. So all we have to do is hit one of these buttons and then our ambient lighting will come on and then we can change the modes with our app. So the next thing I'm gonna do is actually pop off the front panels on the truck, mount all the lighting, get that routed through nicely so it's all ready to go to plug back into this module before everything goes back into place. And then I have a bunch of wiring to do as far as, well, yeah, something else I ordered today. So yes, as the truck has been sitting here apart and we've been working on the different stages of getting all the lighting installed, my mind's been going and I've been surfing online and kind of researching and I came up with another thing I wanna to add to the build before I put all this stuff back together. So definitely drop in the comments, what do you think that might be? And for those of you who have stuck around for this long in the video, we're gonna head upstairs into the mezzanine, give you guys a little bit of a view of the stuff that we've been doing in there kind of got a little bit more accomplished and things are starting to come together a little bit at a time, but we're gonna get there and I just wanna show you guys how far we've gotten so far. Okay, so as you can see, we do have the front of our counter, little bar area here. We have all the rock installed. And this is the air stone from Lowe's. It was actually pretty easy to install. Just a little bit time consuming, making sure everything fit and kind of make your own pattern, make it look however, which way you want to. Do have a little bit more work to do here on the side, kind of make that all finished up. And of course, need countertops, but 
I'm not sure exactly how that's all working out with, you know, everything being closed. If the counter places are now open again, I'm gonna have to look into that as we get a little bit further in this process. But we've definitely put some work into the walls. Neighbor Mike's been helping me out doing a little bit of the spackling and I've been doing the sanding at night, trying to get this all kind of sorted out. And I think we've kind of gotten it to the point now where I think we can start cleaning up all the dust in here and wipe down the walls and we might be just ready for our first coat of paint here. Just wanna go over every little spot, make sure that we don't have anything that I missed, but we'll just do the first coat and then hopefully catch any kind of imperfections, be able to go over them, fix them all up and then do one last coat. Then we can start framing in the windows, doing our bottom kind of wainscoting kind of thing. I do have a sample, I think it's over here in the office. It's gonna look kind of like this and I'm gonna paint this up and I think I'm gonna do this in white. I mean, they always come primer white or whatever, but I might just throw another coat of paint on that, make sure there's no imperfections. And I could do that after I fix up all the nail holes. Obviously we use some finished nails just to put these into the wall and then touch those up so we don't see them. And then up here, I'm gonna have a nice shelf, put all my car models on there. I've got an LED light that's gonna go all the way around the entire room wrap all the way around to here. So I can have all my car models from when I was a kid. I used to collect those things like crazy. So I do have a whole pile of them and no real good place to put them. So I figured automotive memorabilia, car models, whatever I want to put up there would look actually pretty cool for this room. And we've got the flooring and everything downstairs. Just got to put it in and things are starting to come along in here. And I just kind of want to show you guys where this project has ended up so far and hopefully we can get this place looking like a real living room, kitchen, office area very, very soon. But it does look like we're getting some warmer weather now, so it might be time to turn that air conditioning on pretty soon. It does get pretty hot in here if you don't have the climate control on, but that's okay with me. I like the sunny, hot weather in the summertime, my favorite time of year, and hopefully we can get out in the cars, have a little bit more fun. And I do appreciate everybody who's been following along with the Rebel build. We do have more stuff coming with that, and there is, kind of a process to getting this all done. That's why it's kind of been taking a little bit more time than I wanted to. I kind of sometimes wanted to slow down and maybe there's something that I didn't think of in the first place that maybe I want to add later and just kind of want to get it all done at the same time. And being that we're kind of in a somewhat quarantine now, it's starting to lighten up a little bit. I haven't really needed to drive the truck lately, so it's okay if it's down for a while and I just kind of want to get it one and done and I mean, obviously there's gonna be things we're gonna add in the future, but I really don't wanna tear the interior part again if I don't have to. So that's kind of the process of all this stuff going on and how it's gone so far. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always, keep that hammer down. Perfect.